Hiya, just a quick tutorial um, on playing blues. Um, uh, kind of looks like it was inspired by uh, this guy, Johnny Guitar Winter. Unfortunately, you've got to tune your guitar down on account of um, my kids detuned this, and then I did the video and I didn't realise I was playing an untuned guitar, so live and learn. It's perfectly in tune with the out tune piano next door, but this is about an E flat. Um, anyway, so I thought, okay, well, I can just. I can just in the edit. Tune everything up by half a ton, but unfortunately my voice started to sound like this and that's a little bit um, well marginally irritating so anyway I thought okay everyone's gonna have to tune down and then listen to the tutorial and then at the end um, I'll get everyone tuned up to normal E again. I'll give you um uh, give you these notes again at normal pitch so that's it that's what, what E is gonna sound like. That's your A string. That's your D, that's your G, that's your B, and there's your E. So that's more or less what it should sound like. So watch this, get through to the end and we'll get you back up to normal pitch. Hi, if you like blues, this is a good album worth getting. Guitar Slinger, Johnny Winter. So I got this when I was a kid, at a stage when I had got bored of playing chords and wanted to make life a bit more interesting. And there's a song on here called don't Take Advantage of Me, it's a really good song and I kind of um, listened to what he was playing and uh, in a different key came up with this. down in a slightly easier way, probably similar to how I started playing it, um, because it is really, really easy to play if you break it down and you're just learning guitar and you want to just go that little bit further to make um, to make the chords sound a little bit more interesting by putting licks in between. So I'm just going to move this so you can see what's going on. Um, so. So I'm playing it in E. It starts off like this. So, so um, figure two on string three, fret two. Pick that and move that up two frets, and then pick open string one like that. I'm using fingers. Um, there's a pick here. Using pick is fine. So that's what you're doing. So. So it's from two to four on string three. Pick, move up, and then pick string one. And then go back to where you started and do that. So you're picking string three, fret two, letting, letting go, just um, pull down a little bit. It's got a pull off. And then pick string four, fret two. So that lick. And then what you do is you pull off on string four by pulling your finger down a little bit, like that, and then do the, the G, which is fret three, string six, pick, pull it up a semitone, which is, that's a semitone, by pulling down. And that might hurt your fingers, so it, if, if you haven't got a lot of calluses on your fingers, and you know, don't push too hard and wind up getting blisters, um, but that's what's going on. And you can alternately pick using thumb and fingers or whatever. So let's just run through the first E part of that blues. And the second bit is I'm picking. 
taking string four twice open as opposed to the G bit. So that happens so that happens twice. So that's the first part. Okay, so the next bit is your A, lazy A. So think one on strings uh, four, three, and two, and you um, the the root that A on string five. That's quite a predominant note in this riff. So what's going on here is. You can strum it, same thing. I'm using a bit of palm mute. So that, that bit is just bend that C, so it's fret three, string five, and then let it go. And then hit the G, which is string six, fret three. that. I like the sound of it when I'm picking with my fingers. So then you go back to where you started after that. And that happens just once over. Then you go to B. So B in case you don't know. So you want a finger two, uh, fret two, string five, and then finger one, uh, on string four, fret one, finger three on uh, fret two, string three, and then finger uh, finger four on, on uh, fret two, string one. And I'm picking the root, which is on the five, string five, then a strum, then an, an upstroke in this case again. So, and then the next is the root note again on the five, and then a strum. I'm just going to play that over so you. I'm also putting some ghost notes in between there as well, which you could do like that. Or I'm muting between those strums, so only when I want the notes to ring out, I'm holding my hand down and then I'm releasing it, and that mutes it. So that's on string five, this root. That's the lick, so I'll just do And then, and all that is, it's like a, you can play just those three notes, like a triangle. So it's fret three, string six with your second finger. First finger, one fret down, on fret two, string five. Finger three on, um, that's on uh, string four, fret, fret three. I'm playing the root again and then moving up a fret, doing the same, and then the last beat is just, no root, just, just a chord, so. You can do, you can do a whole chord there, so you can add finger one, uh, finger four, um, on fret uh, three, string two. That makes a, a more fuller sound. And then the tail end of it is. And then that's everything, that's all you need to know. Um, and it goes back to where you first started. So the tail end is just a D with open string one. So it's finger one on fret two, string three, and finger three on uh, fret three, string two, and open string one, and that's lazy A, yeah. Muting, mute there. And then back to where you started, which is That's the end of the cycle, then it, it, it repeats round back to the A. Yeah. Another thing you could do on that A, that's quite easy to, to do, I'll just break that down. So open string five, and then you just hammer on uh, fret one and two on string five, and then open string four, and then hammer on fret two on string four. 
And then pluck, the, pluck that string 6G, bend it up a semitone and let go. So I'll do that really slow and that's worth, um, that's worth getting, getting down and, and um, practicing slow, get your fingers to sort of um, move where you want them to and then build up speed. So it's the first bit on string 5, open string 5, pluck that, hammer on. Uh, fret one and two on on uh, string five, and then open string four, and then hammer on that on fret two, and then pluck the G, which is string uh, six, fret three, bend it down, hold it down, move it up to a semitone, that's a semitone there, and then let go. So there's other little things that you could, which you could develop and put in there, but just for starters, I'll just go over that again. So the first lick is... And A. Or the other lick which I just showed you is... in there and then and then your B and then this G up to A and then D and then and then lazy A Play what the original sounds like. So here's the track that inspired those licks um, in a different key. So it's um, Johnny Winter. Don't take advantage of me. We can just drop this needle without doing any damage. So get listening to some blues. Obviously, if you decide to play those licks right the way through the song, there'll be no dynamics and quite di um, quite boring. So you need to develop some more little licks along the way to make um, to make a tune sound interesting. Um, and yeah, back in the day, all we had was like um, the, the TV and tapes and these things to listen to music. Sometimes we'd watch a video and rewind it and rewind it. And um, so I suppose this is taking a little bit of punishment, me dropping the needle on it and trying to get um, get my ear around some of these licks. The 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 reality is that you, if it's not gone in, you're not going to be able to play it. So you listen hard, concentrate on the notes. You know, two or three notes at a time, burn them into your brain and build up slowly. And um, that's the best way to learn. All right, let's get back to normal pitch. From memory, that's where you should be.
about it. Okay, see you next time.